The Thin Clergyman is an English railway enthusiast and author who lives on the mainland. However, he often visits Sodor with either his family or his friend, the Fat Clergyman. He loves cycling around the island and drawing pictures of the engines, and taking pictures of them too. He was even one of the first men to discover Duke the Lost Engine. He's attended many big events too, like the Harwick Branch Line being opened, the Great Railway Show on the mainland, or a technology show at Ulfstead Castle. In fact, he would go on to hold his own show at Ulfstead Castle for his model engines, much to the confusion of Percy. The Tin Clergyman is the most significant character in the books and show because he is in fact the creator of Thomas the Tank Engine itself, Reverend Wilbert Audrey. The Tin Clergyman is by far the most meta thing that Wilbert Audrey put into his books because he is literally putting himself into his books. It's so brilliant and clever because what Audrey does is take real engines and real people and puts them into his books. So he just sort of followed that same logic but with himself because, well, yeah, if Sodor was a real place, then Audrey would definitely be a person who would visit that island a lot. But this video isn't about the man himself, Wilbert Audrey. This is about the Thin Clergyman, who is still technically Wilbert Audrey, but isn't at the same time. Yeah, <laughs> it's a little confusing to say the least. So, let's dive in. Wilbert Audrey's inspiration for Wilbert Audrey was, well, Wilbert Audrey. <laughs> as I said before, this isn't going to be about the life and legacy of Wilbert Audrey himself, as Wilbert Audrey was a very complicated man, and I'd have to do some real soul searching to figure out how I truly feel about him. As for his railway series counterpart though, on the other hand, I think is a much more fun thing to talk about. Wilbert Audrey was born on the 15th of June, 1911, was ordained and happily married by age 30 and had three children, Christopher, Veronica and Hilary. When Christopher was sick, he told him the stories of the island of Sodor. He even drew pictures of it. Eventually, his wife Margaret pressured him to publish them, and the rest, as they say, is history. He would go to many train shows in his time. He even befriended a fellow vicar, Teddy Boston, who was also into steam engines too. An austerity tank would be named after him, and when his son took over the railway series, he would eventually make a book about this very austerity tank. Okay, now that we have a good understanding of the man, let's move on to the thin clergyman himself. The Tin Clergyman's first appearance in the Railway series was in an illustration cameo in Troublesome Engines, where he's seen with Margaret, Christopher, Veronica and Little Hilary. However, this book takes place during 1926, when Audrey would have been about, what, 15? So, unless the Tin Clergyman is also a time traveller, I'm guessing we have to write this off as a non-canon reference. Great Scott! The Tin Clergyman's next appearance was in the very first illustration of Duck and the Diesel Engine, this book takes place during about 1957, but was released in 1958, so I guess we can consider it the Thin Clergyman's first canonical appearance in the books. In the illustration, we see the Thin Clergyman talking to C. Reginald Dalby, one of the former illustrators of the books, where he's telling him off, saying about how this is how an engine is meant to look. <laughs> so right away, we get a very meta Thin Clergyman. In 1967, we get the Thin Clergyman's biggest appearance in the books, where he and his friend, the Fat Clergyman, visit the newly opened Arlesdale Railway. In the morning, Bert is the first engine they meet. They shake hands with the driver and talk about how they're going to take pictures of the train. Later, the clergymen are rushing so fast to get ahead of the train that they splash Bert, unbeknownst to them. And they even take a picture of it. Bert is pissed off by this, and so, in retaliation, when he's climbing the hill, he uses his built-up smoke to splash the fat clergyman. Oh, you gotta love Audrey, not only calling his friend fat, but also having him splashed with water too. <laughs> they even illustrate him laughing at the whole situation. Oh my god, this lad, seriously. However, Bert later mentions that they both apologise to each other, and they even cleaned him up too. So they made up in the end, which is nice. The teen clergyman even talks about writing a book about him. The very book we're talking about right now. In 1969, the two men returned to the railway after hearing Chinese whispers about Duke the Lost Engine. The Arlesdale Railway was built upon his old railway, and so the thin and fat clergyman visit the small engines. I love this scene. It's nice seeing the thin clergyman return to meet the engines again. The two men would take Bert's train to the top of the line each day, and would go hiking for Duke, but wouldn't find him. 
That is, until one day when the fat clergyman falls through the roof of the shed where Duke was hidden in the undergrowth. I just love the only reason that Duke was found was because the fat clergyman was so fat. The men find a ladder and polish up Duke for his new grace. They even embiggen the fat clergyman's hall to get Duke out. Oh my god, lads. Audrey was ruthless with his friend Teddy Boston, it's so funny. Seriously though, Audrey wishes he was as cool as Teddy Boston. Keep in mind, this was a clergyman who owned a steamroller called Satan. Satan. You cannot make this up. Teddy Boston also owned an engine called Pixie, owned many steam tractors, got married in a steam lorry, could play the piano, had an ungodly amount of steam trains. Seeing your light railway, your traction engines, your steamroller, your models, is there anything we've missed? On the steam side, yes, you've missed the big stuff. Seriously though, Teddy Boston did things Audrey could only dream of, and here he is calling him fat in his little railway series book. You gotta love it. Although after saving Duke, this would be the Tin Clergyman's last physical appearance in the books. The engine named Wilbert, who was named after him, did get a book, but we didn't even really see him in or anything. And then... On the 21st of March, 1997, the Thin Clergyman would pass away. However, this wouldn't be the last mention of him, as in 2011, a bust of the Thin Clergyman is revealed, forever immortalising him at the Tidmouth Station Terminus. And yeah, that's pretty much where the Thin Clergyman story ends in the Railway series. He really didn't do too much in Chris's tenure, but to be fair, he had retired by that point. Chris did allude to him in clever ways we didn't expect, however, we really wouldn't have expected how he'd show up next. Sodor's Legend of the Lost Treasure had so many returnees. There was Donald and Douglas, Oliver, Alfie, Max and Monty, Daisy, and how could we forget the small engines, Mike, Rex and Bert. But even that wasn't the most shocking. It was in fact the thin clergyman himself. And my heart skipped a beat. The man, the myth, the legend, the creator of Thomas himself in a CGI production. It was insane. While I didn't realise it at the time, this was in fact a very clever setup for Series 20. The show had plans of adapting the small engine stories into CGI, and so what a better way to bring back Audrey in the 70th anniversary movie. Tit for Tat is definitely in my top 10 episodes of the series. Not only did they faithfully adapt the stories, but they also added extra scenes too, such as the clergyman actually apologising and watching Bert, something that was only mentioned in the books. Or getting to see them on the Scarloe Railway, or the Main Line, or on Thomas's branch line. Speaking of which, I love this scene with Thomas and the clergyman. We already have lots of pictures of tank engines. The fact that they already had plenty of pictures of tank engines a very clever reference to how the thin clergyman became sick of Tobus being crane shunted into sidings where he didn't belong. Using the thin clergyman in this way is really clever and meta, in a similar way to how Audrey actually used himself in his books. But what I really love is how faithful these stories are to the original source material, and how they even elevate it too from the gorgeous animation to the fantastic voice acting, to getting to see the clergyman clean Bert too, just amazing. And how can I talk about this episode without talking about that amazing ending too, where Bert says that he's going to be on TV, but the others are like, that'll never happen. But then Bert looks into the camera and the narrator says, But it did happen, didn't it? Just brilliant. They really got the wink wink nod nod part of the clergyman right. He also made a small cameo in Useful Railway too. Oh, Willie, your load's slipping! Willie, your load is slipping is something I never thought I'd hear come out of the Thin Clergyman's mouth, but here we are. The Thin Clergyman's next appearance was quite random, appearing in the new Hugo episodes. The writers had this unwritten rule that the Thin Clergyman would appear in every special or, you know, whenever something special is occurring, but I don't see how Hugo is considered a special occasion. Sorry Hugo, you ain't special. <laughs> For his next cameo in The Great Race, they went above and beyond. The Thin Clergyman got a whole subplot hanging out with Mr. Percival. We see them on board Thomas's train at the very beginning, 
We see them get off in Vickerstown, and then we see them hanging out throughout the Great Railway Show. Ah, and he even waves at Thomas, and Thomas knows who he was. Oh, that's sweet. That's cute. In his next appearance, we see the return of the fat clergyman as guests on Spencer's train. We're now at the point where he's become like a semi-regular in the show, for better or for worse. In Journey Beyond Sodor, they thought it would be a great idea to have the thin clergyman dance along to his bouncing trains. Yes, this is real. This has really happened. Oh, but don't worry. That's not the worst of it. The insanity-driven Big World Big Adventures movie, they outright nearly had him run over by Ace. Like, okay, I get the joke they're going for here. Like, har har, we're moving on from the Reverend to do our own thing. But come on, there are more respectable ways you can do it than this. He did get a scene at the end of the movie looking really excited that Thomas is back. But after this movie, the Tin Clergyman took a notable absence from the series. Gee, I wonder why. He did appear in the background of Marvelous Machinery, you know, watching all the technology like the ice cream machine or dancing robots or <sighs> flying cars. Why did they make this? Thankfully, Michael White actually understood when to use the Thin Clergyman at appropriate moments, like in the 75th anniversary special, where we see the original drawing of Thomas, which was, you know, pretty neat. This is how you actually use the Thin Clergyman. Like this, not like this. The Great Little Railway Show was a fantastic way to use the Thin Clergyman. So there's a model show for little engines coming to Sodor, but Percy confuses it for little engines like himself. This is so brilliant because in real life, Audrey would bring a display table around from train shows and would show off his models of the engines. This is a great episode to celebrate the 75th anniversary of the Railway series because it really does show the legacy that the Thin Clergyman had on the series. Seeing all the children line up and learn about real steam engines, seeing the Reverend's Farquhar layout, seeing the Reverend's models, this is all stuff that fans of the Railway series still do 75 years later. Nothing will top the Thin Clergyman's appearance in Tit for Tat, but man, the Great Little Railway Show is a damn close second. Well done, Michael. Congratulations to the winner of Best in Show! <laughs> the Tin Clergyman is by far the most meta thing the books or TV show has ever done. Almost every one of his appearances has been something meta or commenting on the story he's in. Be it Finding Duke, be it him being run over by Ace, or having his legacy celebrated, there is truly no other character quite like the Thin Clergyman. I'll give him a call on his mobile phone. I got him one for Christmas. <laughs> he's always complaining that nobody rings him on it. <laughs> 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 Must have it switched off.